Hey guys, today I'm gonna be building another Fruta Pendulum. Everything that I will need for this build is already here and it's just a matter of assembling it and programming the controller. As in many of my projects, this project is going to use a brushless motor that is going to be controlled by the open source Janus controller here and an ESP32 dev kit. In order to avoid a little bit the cogging torque that is natural with the brushless motor, I have this 2.5 to 1 reduction ratio with these gears. And since I didn't want to use a slip ring to pass the cables of the output encoder, I made the second gear hollow so all the cables could go right through it and connect to the Janus controller. Now I'm gonna show you how this project is assembled and it's very simple. The first thing you have to do is um, place the 12 volt input jack and on top of that you uh, place the Janus controller board. Make sure the ESP32 USB connector is sticking out here. On top of that, we put the brushless motor, making sure we, use, we attach the diametrically polarized magnet that is going to let us read the angular position of the brushless rotor. And that connects to these cables here and goes on top of it. For now, I'm not going to connect everything as I should. On top of that, we put the um, bigger gear and a cap. So we everything is like a big tower. And once we have everything properly connected here, we attach the um, encoder that is going to give us the angular position of the pendulum that is here. I'm going to assemble everything properly and show you how it goes. If you want to replicate this project, it might be a little bit hard to find this exact same brushless motor that I'm using because I bought this used off eBay, but you could use a brushless motor such as this that is very cheap and very easy to find. And instead of the Janus controller, you could potentially use something like the simple FOC shield for an Arduino Uno. Either way, all the CAD and code for this particular project is going to be published on GitHub. I couldn't make this chip encoder work reliably, so instead of using this, I'm going to be using this encoder, which is an open collector sensor. I've already used this in the past and it worked perfectly right out of the box. The only thing that I needed to do was to add two uh, pull-up resistors to where the encoder connects. This sensor has 600 pulses per revolution, so that ends up being 2400 counts per revolution, which is more than enough resolution for this application. So this is the final product. You may have noticed that I didn't use a slip ring for the encoder cable. So in order to avoid choking the cable and maybe breaking it, I added a fourth term to the controller that makes sure the motor never drifts too far off from its starting position. So just now I just plugged in the um, the board, the Janus controller board, and it goes through a brief calibration and now this is registered as the home position for the motor. So it will never drift too far off from that position. More so, if it does happen to drift, I added a, another controller that takes over the controller that balances the inverted pendulum to bring the motor back to its home position. 
when you go more than some amount of turns. Mm-hmm. 